this is the first episode. Uh, today we're going to be going to uh, Kenneth Kuinder's house. He was the first president of Zambia and I think we'll get a little bit of a gist of how Zambia gained independence and yeah, just learn a little bit about Kaunda, his history and how he was raised. So, see you there. Okay, so I've just arrived. Bloody hell, I've made an error wearing this jumper because it is very warm. It is very, very warm. Come on, it is well hot. Might be too hot, might be. But yeah, uh, now we're here, let's just get inside. Let's do some exploring. So what you just saw was his actual house, that's where he used to live. We're in the sort of like uh, museum, it's sort of paying homage to uh, what he did. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna read a little bit about that and learn more. This is him just after he got out of prison, uh, wearing the uh, famous black toga. And the black toga was a sign of political protests. So just coming out after prison, he was still pretty fuming, not gonna lie. Fuming! Sick of it! Uh, reading up about uh, a little bit of what he did, uh, he was part of a party called the ANC, uh, which stands for African National Congress. So they were the party that were campaigning against the uh, government at the time. And because of this opposition, uh, Kawunda himself was uh, sent to prison. I believe sentenced uh, two months imprisonment, uh, and that was in 1953, uh, just for trying to get independence. So you can tell he was willing to uh, do whatever it took for this country. On January 20th in 1964, uh, Kaunda's party at the time unit uh, won election. October 24th, 1964, that is when Zambia became independent from British rule and then Kenneth Kaunda became president, first president of Zambia, so not bad. That concludes uh, the first part of this video. I've learned a lot about how the country gained independence uh, and what uh, Kenneth Kaunda had to go through. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna leave now. Uh, I'm gonna get some food and see you later. Right, lads, ladies, um, and other, if you're watching. Uh, since we're going to keep it on the theme of presidents, we decided to go to the Presidential Burial Site National Monument. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and, yeah, we went there, but apparently we weren't allowed to film, but take pictures? What? So, we did that instead. So, instead of video footage, I've just got... A couple of photos, I'm just going to explain to you why the buildings are shaped how they are, and um, yeah, that's about it really, and a little bit about the presidents, I think, yeah, that too. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Right, well, before we proceed, you guys are probably wondering, Tamanda Banda, how did you find out about this place? Well, we're waiting. Right, I'll tell you how. So basically, I went through a company called Voyazed. They are the only, and I repeat, only online travel agency in Zambia. They offer all the services that you need when booking a trip is concerned. So I talked to them and they said, look, we provide the cheapest rates. And I was like, I don't believe you. They showed me the rates and they're the cheapest, right? And I'm team Jesus, so I wouldn't lie to you. So get booking with them. Woo, okay, we're back. Where was I? Oh yes. Now we're gonna talk about the, um, 
buildings are actually called mausoleums. All right, sorry about that. Better declare that Zambia is a Christian nation. So let's begin with the second president of Zambia, the late great Frederick Chaluba. He had a love for fashion and this is represented by the outer marble pavement at his mausoleum, designed in the shape of a necktie. But President Chaluba was not just remembered for his stylish ways. On December 29, 1991, he declared Zambia a Christian nation. His mausoleum is shaped in the design of a chapel and has 10 pillars to show that he completed two full terms in office. Right, so the second mausoleum I'm going to be talking about is dedicated to the late, great Levi Patrick Mwanawasa. Uh, he was the third president of Zambia. So, as you can see, uh, the stone pillars outside of the mausoleum are in shape of a boot, denoting his commitment to stamping out corruption. Uh, the five steps depict uh, the five years and a complete term in office. Uh, followed by three narrow ones to show that the second term in office was incomplete because he actually died in office. And as you can see, the mausoleum is shaped like a stool, showing that he died as a sitting president. Uh, last but not least, uh, the final mausoleum is dedicated to the late, great Michael Satter. He was the fifth president of Zambia. So when uh, he was administered to office, uh, he made an oath to rule Zambia according to the Ten Commandments and to depict this the mausoleum contains ten steps leading to the upper section. Uh, Michael Satter also created a tenth province which is represented by the tenth step at the lower level of the mausoleum and his mausoleum is the only one out of the three to have two stories. <laughs> <laughs>